This is Dante Williams. Are you watching? Dante's. 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 Boxing Nation. This is Showtime Sean Porter. Filipino Flash, Jesse Burgess. This is Al Bernstein. You're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. I am sure we're ready to check Shane. Search over the last name, Morgan. Dante's. 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 Boxing Nation. Boom, 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 boom. Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze from Wilder. My name is Gennady Golovkin. And you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Hi, this is Union Jackson, and this is Dante Boxing Nation. This is Julia Jackson, and you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. <laughs> All right. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? You know, I never thought I would say this, but the heavyweight division is where it's at. The heavyweight division is really heating up. And this fight is going to take place on December 19th should be one of the best heavyweight fights, at least matchup wise, of the year. And that's Brian Jennings versus the undefeated Luis Ortiz, the Cuban monster. Cause that's what he's looking like right now, is a monster. Luis Ortiz is a vicious knockout artist. You know, I've been high on both of these fighters for a while now. I mean, before he lost to Vladimir Klitschko, I was telling cats for the longest on my radio show that I thought Brian Jennings was the most talented American heavyweight. I always thought that Brian Jennings had somewhat of an Andre Ward type of style. He was really slick, really clever in there, especially for a heavyweight. So with that being said, him going against this monster, Luis Ortiz, man, this is going to be an explosive fight. And I don't know if I should feel sorry for Brian Jennings or if I should be happy for him. Because it seems like ever since Brian Jennings fought against the heavyweight champion, the real heavyweight champion in the world, Vladimir Klitschko, it seems like they have been offering him the most dangerous fights available. Now, I was told that originally Brian Jennings actually turned this fight down. But he's not, the, he's not the only fighter that turned this fight down. Berman Stavern, they actually turned the fight down as well. Originally, Luis Ortiz was supposed to be fighting Berman Stavern on the uh, Gennady Golovkin undercard. And I told a lot of people, I said, I would never pay for that Gennady Golovkin Lemieux fight because it wasn't a pay-per-view fight. But if they would have put Luis Ortiz versus Berman Stavern on the undercard, I would have paid to watch that card. And to me, that would have been the main event. So now Luis Ortiz, he finds himself on another undercard. This time he's gonna be on Nicholas Walters undercard. Nicholas Walters is fighting against uh, Jason Sosa. And I'll be honest, I know nothing about Jason Sosa. So before that fight, I'm gonna do my homework and check out some of his fights. But for that reason alone, I feel that Jennings versus Luis Ortiz should be the main event. And that's no disrespect to Nicholas Walters. I mean, you could damn near say that he's pound for pound, one of the best fighters in the world, somewhere around the bottom 10 possibly. So anyway, this is a very, very competitive fight. You know, um, I really wonder what the incentive was for Brian Jennings to take this fight. Because the rumors are he was offered this fight before and Brian Jennings, he turned it down. So if that is the case, they must have made Brian Jennings an offer he could not refuse. I give Brian Jennings a lot of credit for taking this fight because Ortiz is somewhat building a reputation of being like one of the Mike Tysons of the heavyweight division. He's a very talented fighter, very talented fighter. I was very impressed when he knocked out Latif Coyote in the first round. I was very impressed the way he did it, the, it with the manner, the technique that he used in the first round. See, I see a lot of, you know, undefeated fighters from heavyweights to even other divisions knock a guy out in the first round. And I've seen them do it with flaws where I wasn't even impressed. I've seen Dominic Brazil knock guys out early. and. Quite frankly, I wasn't impressed because of his technique. It just looked like there were flaws that much better heavyweights were going to expose in the future. But with Luis Ortiz, the way he knocked out 
Latif Coyote. He did it with technique, man. He did it with technique. You know, little jump back steps, counter punching, and then when he counter punch, he explodes with combinations and explosive power. And then he just knocked Coyote out. Coyote had never been knocked out before. And Latif damn near knocked him out cold. He had him doing the stanky leg all around the damn ring. Okay? Now the only asterisk on that performance, and it's kind of a big one, is the fact that Luis Ortiz, he failed a drug test afterwards, and that fight ended up being overturned to a no contest. And I believe Luis Ortiz was suspended for a year. Now the question a person like myself will always have is after you get busted for taking whatever type of banned substance you took, were you only good because of what you took? Was that just the PEDs that was looking good in there against Latif Coyote? Or was that really his skill? Can he perform like that without cheating, without failing the test? And we got the answer to that question because since his return, he's knocked out two opponents back to back in the same type of fashion that he knocked out Latif Coyote. So I'm really stoked about this fight. I can't wait to watch it. Once again, the heavyweight division is popping right now. And I would say within another year, we are going to damn near see somewhat of a heavyweight tournament because all of these guys are eventually going to start fighting. Deontay Wilder is going to most likely have to step up and fight against his number one contender, Alexander Povetkin. You have Klitschko versus Fury. You have Anthony Joshua versus Dylan White. You have Andy Ruiz, who I can't wait to see Andy Ruiz step up because he's going to really test an opponent's heart and how they deal with pressure. Because Andy Ruiz, he has a terrific chin and he has a lot of technique for a heavyweight. So I can't wait to see him step up against another one of these undefeated rising young heavyweights. Now, my new favorite out of all of the young heavyweights coming up is a guy by the name of Charles Martin. I'm really, really impressed with this guy, Charles Martin. I am always impressed with the technique, the sweet science, because at the end of the day, that's what it's about. That takes you the furthest in this sport. And Charles Martin, who fought on Deontay Wilder's undercard against um, Duapa, I felt that he put on the best performance on that undercard. Little technique, and you know what, I was bringing in my son to, to watch some of the things that he was doing, because me and my son, we've been working on the touch jab at the, at the gym. You know, just setting up all different type of combinations off the touch jab. You know, you'll see Floyd Mayweather, he's a master at doing that. If you ever, you go back and you watch what he was doing with Canelo, he'll start just touching you with the jab just to create a diversion. And while you start locking in on that touch jab, all of a sudden, a right hand comes out of nowhere. And then it hits you on the other side of your face. Or it may hit you in your solar plexus. You don't know where you're gonna get hit because you're so focused on that touch jab. So this is what Charles Martin was doing. He's a southpaw, by the way, as well. He's like a six foot five southpaw. And like I said, this guy fights like a welterweight, okay? And he has power. Another heavyweight that you guys really need to keep your eyes on is Joseph Parker. So, you know, there's a lot of talent in the heavyweight division. So with the division popping like this, I wouldn't be surprised if Vladimir Klitschko tries to stick around. Because since Klitschko has been dominating, the heavyweight division has never been popping like this. Okay? Once again, with fighters like Anthony Joshua Deontay Wilder that brings the charisma and if he continues to win if he continues to to build his name right that fight right there is going to be huge especially if Deontay Wilder has to fight his mandatory Pavekin and he beats him if Deontay Wilder beats Pavekin then I would be impressed and I would deem that as his final exam Okay, of course, he would then have to beat the man, the real champion, 
But when I say final exam, I mean that makes him ready for anybody, in my opinion. Because when Deontay Wilder fights against Povetkin, his inside game is going to be tested like it has never been tested before. So, so without going too far off the subject, I'm going to go ahead and end this video right now. That's all I got. I'm on to the next one.